it's hard to navigate. Water is pretty scarce. The elevation changes are brutal. That's what everyone kept telling me. Oh yeah, and don't go northbound. But it's a little too late for that. used to be yellow and in the shape of a man hiking. I guess it's supposed to be our globe. I kind of see the resemblance. So like that's his walking stick and his hat and obviously there's the rest of him. Now it's just a white blaze. It's kind of cool to get to see it because you figure in a couple years, you know, it may not be there. So it's one of those things that future hikers may not Get to actually see, but yeah, that's pretty neat. But all of that changed the moment I hit Chestnut Mountain, Rich Mountain. no one warned me how hard this was gonna be but something the shuttle driver said really stuck guess it's all in what you focus on in the moment it really sucks and if all you focus on is that you're gonna have a terrible time But if you try to focus on the beautiful views, the friends you make, and those little surprises along the way, when all's said and done, it's not really so bad. wish I remembered all that sentimental crap the next day. Remember all that 
sappy stuff I said about it not really being so bad. Yeah, all of that went out the window with the violent wind, loss of feeling in my fingers, and surprise pelting with hail. Going down the road feeling bad I'm going down the road feeling bad Going down the road feeling bad so bad I ain't gonna be treated this way Going well and chilly winds don't blow I'm going well and chilly winds don't blow I'm going well and chilly winds don't blow I ain't gonna be treated this way I'm going where the water tastes like wine I'm going where the water tastes like wine when well, the water tastes like wine Ain't gonna be treated this way Most folks know he was a conservationist that loved these mountains. But I found there's a little more to Loeb's story after a sudden heart attack in his 40s, doctors told him to start walking. Well, walking turned to hiking, and hiking turned to exploring and bushwhacking through the area that now makes up a trail in his honor. That long ago, I was sitting in this same spot, 45 pound pack, no earthly idea what I was doing. And if you had told me then I'd be back in a couple years, hell bent on hiking the whole trail through, I probably would have laughed in your face. When you've got old and wild places like this, there's bound to be folklore and legends. And it's no surprise Shining Rock has got a few. But the best I've heard comes from Charles Frazier's Cold Mountain. A people used to live at the fork of the river. One day, a stranger came warning them of a coming enemy. He invited them to a place without sickness or war. But they would have to fast seven days before meeting him at the Shining Rocks. So the people did. All except for one. When they arrived, the rocks parted, revealing a plentiful land. 
just then thunder and lightning surrounded the people, and the dishonest man let out a war cry. The rock sealed, turning them all away. And that people were later driven out on the Trail of Tears. Nothing miraculous happened when I arrived, but then again, I did just eat lunch. It was just terrifying. I tried to follow the trail. I got lost in an area called the Narrows at this campsite. Then I got turned around, wound up walking um, backwards towards Stairs Mountain. And then when I tried to pick the trail back up, it disappeared <laughs> behind some blowdowns. And where the map told me to walk, sorry, I'm trying to stow my tracker poles. And where the map told me to walk, there was nothing. Just like walking on this back here and so I'm all scratched up and terrified because I was like great I'm gonna be a statistic I'm gonna get lost in shiny rock wilderness there's no blazes I'm screwed but I did find the trail so that's good uh, I don't even want to know where it picked back up I'm, I'm just gonna keep on walking finally made it to Deep Gap with a few more hours of daylight and a decision to make. Summit Cold Mountain and camp another night or keep going and finish this through hike. The last three miles are a total blur. All I could think about were pancakes, a hot bath, and getting home. The Art Lobe Trail is without a doubt an incredible journey. But it's also so harsh and humbling. This trail will lick you, And just when you think it's giving you all it's got, it'll come right back and lick you again. This one is ridiculous. Stupid hole. Which you can let break you. Or you can let motivate you to get back up and back out there.